Topics for Kantipur Conference this session is Can Nepal do IT? Newer technologies are emerging day by day, and even an illiterate or a semi literate Nepali using a smartphone or a smart TV or any other gadgets that is governed by the information technology. And IT, that is the use of the computers and many other physical devices to create, process, store, and the deliver the electronic data. That is only the principle or the theoretical interpretation, but it has much more beyond this. So we are going to discuss about can Nepal do IT here in this platform. And our moderator is founder of Tangent Waves. He's a consultant, trainer, and an entrepreneur. More than two decades, he has the entrepreneurial experience. Mr. Suman Sakya is the moderator. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. A very good afternoon to everyone who is here in this hall and who are not in this hall, who are listening to us and viewing us on uh, YouTube. Thank you very much. Can Nepal do IT? A friend of mine uh, returned from Gaza last week after being there for three and a half months. She says that uh, it has been a very big impact in her life and a life-changing moment for her. Because as we know, there are multiple restrictions in Gaza. And the only way people find an outlet to share thoughts, do business, or do anything for that matter, is IT or ICT. And uh, she was amazed to see multiple innovations, multiple thought processes, be it in publishing books or startup entrepreneurship or even on the policy side, IT has been very, very in instrumental and it is shaping the way the country is thinking of. Similarly, last week there was a talk program that I attended where a friend of mine from Microsoft was here, Sagun. Uh, he uh, is based in Seattle and uh, among the 160,000 people who are with Microsoft, uh, he is the head of uh, Microsoft support system and provides a 24-7 support to the entire uh, Microsoft uh, products and services. And uh, he says that uh, he was initially based in Bangalore to set the back-end office to support, whether it is Xbox or Microsoft products. And it has to work 24-7. But then they had to shift to Philippines because Philippines as a country offered a better infrastructure, better support from the policies, and uh, now even a mom-pop shop in Philippines does call centers and so on and so forth. So as a country, there has been an amazing impact on that side as well. We have also seen the power of IT in terms of what has, has been used to harness the presidential elections in US as well, be it the Barack Obama or uh, President Donald Trump as well. At the same time, we have seen the social media movement uh, where it has influenced governments in Africa and at the same time, Me Too movements as well. Yesterday, during his inaugural address, the Prime Minister also mentioned of creating an environment that could give rise to another Facebook, Alibaba, Infosys or Google in Nepal. So the intent from the government is also there. So can Nepal do IT? We have seen uh, multiple businesses that are doing very well in Nepal, and we have some of them on our panel as well. And we've also seen uh, companies like Incessant Rain or Cloud Factory, and Daraz, for example, Verix, Worldlink, Vinet, and so on and so forth. So we have seen uh, multiple avenues. And today we have a wonderful panel where we have Akanksha Tyagi from Social Friendly. She is the founder there uh, from India. We also have uh, Biswas Thakal, who is the president of F1 Soft Group, and uh, Ashim Mansingh Basnet, who is the regional director of Pathao. So I'm, I'm sure that we'll have a wonderful discussion. Welcome, panelists, as well. Few house rules. Uh, we have to keep within our time limit. We started late, but the organizers have given a little extra time for us to wrap up this session. So please do hold on.
to your hunger pangs because after this uh, the lunch would be waiting but I'm sure that uh, if the discussion is engaging you'll be here. The other is that uh, if you would like to ask questions and if you have not downloaded the Kantipur Conclave app please do so and uh, please post your questions and when you do post your questions it'll be good if you address that question to a particular panelist here so it'll make my job a little easier. So moving on to our discussions with our panelists, I would like to first go to Biswas, who is, uh, in my terms, the uncrowned king of the financial services in the digital space. And uh, we'd like to know from him what has brought him here till now. Over to you, Biswas. Thank you, Sumandai. So uh, we... Uh, have created like a financial disruption, we say, in this country uh, with few uh, mobile financial services product like uh, mobile banking and eSEVA. But back in 2004, when we started, we started with the domain registration service and slowly we moved to website development. And then we figured out that's the, not the thing that we are looking for. And then we moved to uh, alert based service and then mobile banking service and then we found that's the thing which we need to explore and this country really needs a disruption in a banking technology and we started developing and uh, copying the concept from abroad what is needed for the country like Nepal and then we tried to deploy in uh, various financial institutions to give them the A's of banking and now we're able to serve more than 8 million direct customers through our services. And uh, people right now, if you receive SMS in your mobile, your account is debited and your account is credited. That's the technology we have deployed in this country. And uh, I assume like uh, almost 70%, 80% of our audience use directly indirectly our service which we have started from 2008 till today and uh, we also serve uh, with the uh, oldest and biggest payment gateway called eSEVA which we have established more than 41,000 outlets across Nepal to serve people which uh, doesn't know how to use technology let's say if my parent doesn't know how to use technology and want to pay a bill they can reach out to the outlet and uh, use our service by requesting them to just to pay my bill. On top of that, maybe he needs to say spend some money to facilitate the bill payment. So what I believe is we have just started our journey. And uh, how, how I want to relate that is like, I'll say that in Nepali, I'm going to say that different equipment we say that's our team the biggest challenge right now is how to fine tune that how to balance that so that we can reach out to the our destiny in a smooth way thank you Thank you, Biswas, for uh, letting us know what your company is doing. I'll move on to uh, Ashim. In Kathmandu, I've heard jokes about how Pathao actually engineered the government clampdown on ride shares. You know? That's because to gain very, very affordable publicity. And from an unknown brand to a very easy visibility over a couple of months. So what has brought you to Kathmandu, uh, bringing Patao here? Um, uh, first of all, we did not engineer anything. Uh, a clarification, if I may. Uh, it was 2016, I presume, when all of us were in the unofficial blockade phase when we were hitching rides with each other. Uh, there were a bunch of very young innovators um, that had started a company in Bangladesh and after two years they wanted to expand abroad 
And what we needed over here is a holistic platform where ride sharing would be a key component. My team and I, uh, we were working on getting investments, uh, finding the possible technological partner and build a team to run a company like this. And uh, fortunately, Patao wanted to go to one of the South Asian countries. So we got uh, introduced casually online. And uh, it took a year for them to come to Nepal. Um, that is bringing the brand to Nepal. Now, uh, from growing into what we are today, from what we were three months back, and we've only been in the market for a little over four months, uh, it took a lot of hard work, a lot of sleepless nights. Uh, I'm very confidently, I could confidently tell everyone, the team that I get to work with, a very small team, have put in their heart and mind in making Nepal a better place. Uh, we managed to change the... Uh, thought of how ride-sharing works before, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the wait time used to be 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the type of vehicle. Now we've decreased it to five minutes. So once you order a ride, a book a ride, uh, you get on the ride in less than five minutes. That is because we disrupted the way people were commuting from point A to point B. Uh, and that has given us a lot of pleasure on how Nepal Nepalese right now are going about in Kathmandu. So yeah, well, but we did not, again, we did not uh, engineer the whole thing. Um, very good to know, um, Ashim. Moving on to Akanksha, I was very intrigued by your company's name, Social Friendly. Many of my friends who tell me that I post a lot on Facebook and all, there must be a lot of social unfriendly people also. <laughs> or is that so? Um, uh, what does your company do? Uh, could, you, could you let us know um, how did you start uh, socially, social friendly and uh, uh, what does it do now? So uh, I hope you all can hear me. Yeah. So social friendly, we are basically a digital consulting company. Thank you. Yeah, now it's better. So Social Friendly is a digital consulting. And uh, the core competency being that we bridge the gap between uh, offline, which is the real world, and online world, which is powered by internet. Because uh, we believe that the real world, offline world, and online are not actually two different worlds, per se, but actually hemispheres of the same planet. So, and we do it across all platforms, you know, be it branding, be it communication, be it IT, or skills, or finance. So, anything and everything you talk about, we take it offline, we understand your core values and what, is, what the organization means to you, be it for individuals or for organizations. And if you're existing online, we sort of uh, interpret how the atmosphere and structures for you can be offline. So Social Friendly has had a very interesting journey. We've been, interestingly, we've been working majorly in this part of the world, namely uh, India, of course, because we're based out of Delhi, Nepal, a little bit, and Bhutan, to a certain extent. Um, if I now come back to the panel that we're talking about, we do some certain uh, IT consulting also. So whenever somebody comes up to us, there's a perspective that we sort of give them. So be it for individual or for organization, and like we are talking today for Nepal as a country, if you ask me, can Nepal do IT, I'll say, surely, definitely, why not? I mean, if you look at the internet statistics, you have around 63% penetration. There are approximately 50% or excess uh, plus 50 percent mobile users, so what is stopping us? And we all know about the population and the generation. We are mostly on the youth side. So, but then, if you ask me, what's the roadmap? How to go about it? So the first question, the first perspective that we need to understand is the users uh, versus creators. When I say users versus creators, users, what, how does Nepal sort of see itself, say, in the next decade, in the next 10 years? Do you want a, a Alibaba 
or say a Facebook or just say a Flipkart for that matter to come here and establish itself or you want to have sort of an environment where you give uh, encouragement to more people like this us and my friend Asim here to do more such good work. And if we say that yes, we want to be creators, we want to have that sort of IT hub happening here, right here, we want that action in-house, then the next question that comes up is, okay, what are those 10 areas that we want to focus? Because see, IT is a information technology. You know, it, the word itself is huge. So what are those areas that we want to focus upon? And understanding that is not just, so IT is not just a matter of sort of understanding what are the trends around the world and implementing it. That's, that's not how it should be done, but instead, sort of understanding the geography, understanding the culture, the language, and everything and anything that goes around it, and then giving a solution to a common problem. I would want to sort of substantiate what I'm trying to say by giving an example. Recently, um, uh, I went to Thailand, and uh, we, I, I was just in Krabi for about seven days. So to move around, we ordered a ride from Grab. So Grab has this chat option where you can chat with your driver. You know, our female driver was telling us where she was and when is she going to arrive. So whenever she was typing, I could see there was the, a word pop up. It said translating. So what actually was happening is that she was writing in her own local language and the app was translating that to my preferred language. So that's what it is that yes, IT, Definitely, if you want to do it, you can do it. But how do you make it your? How do you solve your personal, country-specific, geography-specific problem rather than just implementing the trends? Thank you, Akash. Maybe on the next round, I'll possibly ask you to share some of the examples. You know? Sure. Moving uh, over to Biswas. And uh, sensing that uh, we have limited time as well, uh, we'll combine a few questions together and maybe you can give your thoughts. Uh, F1 Soft overall through its services, or even eSaver for that matter, I understand it already does for the utility bills 12% of telecom bills in Nepal, you know, around 15% of electricity, and 20% uh, of domestic flights. Now you also have uh, a a friend uh, at the Prime Minister's office also, influencing policy. So are you trying to sort of, uh, um, what are your plans, you know? Um, what, what would you are currently doing now? And uh, what do you intend to do in the future? Thank you, Sumandai. Uh, I want to answer this in Nepali so that uh, it, there won't be any confusion F1 soft le afulai banuna ke banauna ra ke garna khoji ra cha bhanne kura ma chai we really want to be google we really want to be amazing amazon of this country kina bhanda heri if you see google as a pathao asim dai yaha hunu cha total hijo panel ma hunu thyo so this technology somehow use Google platform. So uh, what do we want to see in future? F1 software value kyo bandahiri. We want to see thousands of entrepreneurs riding in our technology and building their business. So Amro Lagi, Amro success, Amro Lagi, Amro future kyo bandahiri. We want to create a platform. We want to create a technology. To technology le thousands of entrepreneurs le have no business bonono sakos, have no business create gorno sakos. And uh, we don't want to dominate or uh, compete in our house. We want to show them the way how to do it. And we want to give them the direction how to do it. And we are always there to help young entrepreneurs if they really want to seek advice and then the support from what we have learned in the past and uh, what will be better for this country. So, I want to create technology, we want to be a big company and definitely that 
platform allows multiple uh, players to come and enjoy what we have done and achieved in our like uh, tough time. Thank you, Vishwas. Um, I'm sure that all Nepalis would wish you all a best of luck also, so that we have a company in Nepal which can also be showcased at the global stage where such things are happening. Um, coming to Ashim, um, the group of friends who also told me the first thing also told me that uh, you are very smart in uh, entering the market through the back door and uh, to capture the market which somebody else has already developed. So are you just going to stick to ride sharing or, or Pothao has different yeah. plans as well? All right, uh, first of all, was the market developed? Uh, would be one question that I would, last, I would like to ask everyone. Uh, <clears throat> yes, there were competition. Possibly all. I was saying that um, I heard, again, okay. please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that uh, now 85% uh, of the rides that happen now happens through Pathao. Uh, that is what I've been told. Uh, that is what uh, the data that uh, from various places that we've collected shows that we do uh, a lot of rides. That is why the traditional taxis were threatened because ride sharing in Nepal was here for the last two years. Uh, hardly anyone bothered to knock on their doors. Uh, three months after we launched, three months and six days to be exact, the crackdown began. Uh, we have been disrupting, and um, like he disrupted the MFS, we disrupted the way people were moving, uh, the way people wanted to move, the way people want their logistic to happen. So there will be a lot of uh, pushbacks from a lot of strong unions. And we are ready for that. Are we entering into other market? Yes, we are entering into other verticals. Uh, one of the verticals that was launched mid-Jan was Parcel. Uh, as of now, uh, we are the fastest on-demand logistics support company in Kathmandu, besides ride sharing. Uh, is that what we'll only do? No, we have a lot of places that we could be in and make a difference. So, yes, the future is there, and we are inching towards the future. Thank you, Ashim. Yeah. I'm sure Pata would do very well in, in Kathmandu and overall in Nepal as well. Um, Akanksha, when you talked about uh, some of the campaigns that you have done in uh, India or in Nepal or in Bhutan, uh, could you give us an example as to how uh, maybe a traditional big behemoth, a big large PSU or, or, or company or an organization can uh, maybe take help of your services to become more IT friendly or more savvy or connect to the users or, or customers? So through social friendly, our uh, core objective is to not just have uh, market expansion, because obviously any business would love that, but also to have a sustainable way of uh, conducting business and that ultimately which leads to a sustainable environment uh, when it comes to business or economics or anything in general. So uh, in this part of the world, one of the gaps that we've noticed and we've been working towards it is majorly awareness. Awareness when it comes to anything around IT, whether it's about the IT solutions or the back end. You know, if I take a small example, uh, the common problem that we've seen in India and Nepal and Bhutan and, and especially this part of the world is that if you're, you're making a website, then a very small factor uh, called SSL, which ens ensures your website's security so that you can prevent hacks, is, I mean, people are not aware of it. So you must have noticed that a website says HTTP and HTTPS, certain websites are. So that's a very small aspect of it. So th then you have to sort of 
spend a lot of time explaining them that, okay, why is this important? What is SSL? So things like that. So we've been working a lot in creating such sort of awarenesses as of now, rather than just going out and pitching our products and services. Yes, we do uh, a lot of digital consulting when it comes to uh, say IT project management or creating ERP solutions and also implementation to a certain extent but majorly we've been doing trainings you know be it social media so uh, I go about four times a year to Bhutan to just give social media trainings you know what is social media what sort of content should go out especially for their country their geography you know what are the challenges that they're facing how do they counter it so yeah, that's, that's the area where we've been focusing uh, as of now. Okay. Um, last month, my daughter had to uh, submit her small project in her school, and it was supposed to be an autobiography that she had to write. She finished her assignment, then she came to me and said, Baba, can you open your laptop and uh, open your Facebook? I said, what do you want to do? I said, I just want to see your timeline. And I said, please don't post anything. And I said, fine. So after half an hour, she comes back and says, I want to print these five photographs. And there I saw that I had posted when she was small, when she went to school, when she had her first uh, birthday, and then as we moved up. You know? Then I realized that nowadays we don't dig into our own laptops to see our own um, timeline, but we have to depend on Facebook to see what we have done in, on our uh, life, you know. But that poses a big question as well. Uh, while that may sound good, but at the same time, a lot of our information is in public, you know. And uh, it also maybe raises a lot of questions on the security aspect of data, you know. Um, as the theme of the session is, can Nepal do IT? I'm going to Biswas, and because you have played a big role as well, what were your thoughts or recommendations or what can a uh, company do, what can users do, or what can the government do to facilitate this so that uh, people feel more secure of their information, of their data? So what uh, I have uh, seen and uh, noticed is like uh, we are very young on internet and uh, we are learning on using the social media and then the learning to use the internet. So if you see like from 2008 to 2000, uh, 2019, like 2% 2 internet penetration to 65% internet penetration and this because of only uh, due to the social media. And uh, from young age to the elder age, like uh, everyone is in social media. Now, if you see there are like so many viral content over the internet and we can't even uh, identify which is true and which is not. So the thing what uh, the government and then the, the people, uh, the company like ours needs to focus is on the, uh, the literate on the internet content and uh, advise everyone to be less exposed in the internet so that uh, what I, I personally feel threat is like uh, maybe by 2020 we'll have a big achievement over the internet, over the like uh, development and then the technology but at the same time the the youngsters depression ratio as well as the suicide ratio will be on the peak side so if we didn't control ourselves on the social media and then the the influencer the negative influential factor then it will be a disaster for the country like us where we really lack the knowledge of uh, the content as well as the internet and then the how to use how to control so the your camera will be hacked your microphone will be hacked uh, during and you don't know and uh, if we unable to literate the youngsters to use this kind of gadget in a sensible way then uh, there will be a big disaster so I think the change should be like from ours and we need to disseminate the information to youngsters and then the elders to use the internet and expose the control on over the exposure so uh, would you support the government in, in trying to curb these things or, or the recent policies that have been brought, brought around? I don't have like a, a concrete concept on that part, but the thing is like uh, there will, should be a other round. So we need to have a campaign, we, we need to have a, like a, the social 
campaign over uh, TVC, paper, media, everywhere, saying like uh, the internet is good, but you need to use it in a, in a uh, responsible way. So it's so like a, a cigarette as well as the liquor. So if you need, to, it needs to be controlled. So I think the information and then the knowledge needs to be transferred to the people rather than like having a restrictive actions over the uses and then the, the utilization of the internet. Um, similar question to Ashim. Um, the government uh, relies upon the 1993 Act um, for the transport, and, and we have seen that uh, on media as well. But at the same time, there are genuine concerns about the safety of users and uh, the breach of data as well, which, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Pathao had issues in Bangladesh for that. So how do you ensure that uh, these things are not repeated in Nepal? Uh, regarding data, let me uh, start with data security. Uh, uh, what we do in Nepal is we, for customer side, we only have their number, phone number, mobile number registered. If anything is to happen, the, the only thing that would leak would be the phone number. Um, but if anything criminal has happened through the customer side, then uh, their number only gets uh, activated when they have had produced all the uh, legal documents to the telcos. So you all, the data center for the customer side is basically with the telcos, uh, not with us. For the rider side, we ask them to submit the driving license, a valid driving license, a valid bill book, and their number. So uh, that way we can ensure that the riders have been vetted by the government, and if they can ride or drive, then the government would have had given them the, uh, the driving license. Uh, the registration is because we do not want any stolen motorbikes to be used through our platform, or uh, a, a registered bike would be insured to a certain degree. And the phone number, again, for other information that might be required in days to come, but we do not have that. So uh, that way the, the information is quite secured with us. Uh, we can dig in when and if need be, but we don't do that. In terms of physical security, uh, we can track all the rides real time. Uh, who is riding with whom and where are they going? Are they deviating from the uh, original planned route? Uh, we can track if there is a fraudulent ride going on, and we can course correct real time. So that way, any kind of incidents and accidents can be avoided uh, as far as possible. So yes, in terms of security, uh, we are trying to push a pavilion rider helmet scheme, uh, which the traffic tried to push in the 2000s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it did not succeed then, but we are taking time, and we will be pushing it in days to come. Uh, that needs to go through awareness campaign instead of making them wear the helmet. So uh, security is one of the biggest concern that Patao or my team or I have in terms of ride sharing. We want it to be the best and the most secured in terms of information as well as physical security. So yes, it is very important and we are doing our level best to ensure that everyone is secured. So last question to Akanksha before we open the floor. Um, which was just mentioned about how as we move towards uh, um, data breaches and, and IT security and people should curb what they are do on the social media, it is possibly anti what your business does. Uh, is that so? Or how does, uh, because yesterday also we heard um, Miss World, uh, Miss Nepal, um, Shrinkhala saying that uh, she was barraged with uh, you know, fake accounts and, and overdosing was she almost went into a sort of a shell to do that. So, so how, to, how, to, how do you tackle these things, uh, even for, not just for individuals, but for organizations and companies, or, if, or for on a larger format for, for the country as well? So the first thing that we go to, when we go up to somebody and we tell them that, see, online is just a reflection of the world that is offline. So the way you behave in real life, you should be behaving online. That's the first key line, and that has to be really, really understood. Uh, 
as you said, for organizations also, data security and data breach is such a big issue. And, and in fact, for users in general, we saw what happened with Facebook. But then uh, also, see, IT security is it's a continuous process, and it's a collaborative effort. When I say continuous process, you have to be on it. It cannot be a one-day thing. So if you're an organization, you have to understand that nothing, when it comes to IT, is hack-proof. If there is a lock, then obviously there is a key. But you have to be one step ahead. You have to understand what are the latest trends. How do you stop certain hacks to happen? What are the new softwares that are coming up? As I said, SSL, that's a very basic thing. But a lot of people around don't know. I also take uh, digital marketing classes back in Delhi. So I tell my students, and most of them already have their own websites, that see, these are the security measures that you should be maintaining. And, and, and they're shocked. They, they said that we were not aware of it. So, A, it is a, it's a continuous process. You can, and for even if you're a social media user, how many of us do actually go to our privacy settings and look what is public and what's not? It's not like the options are not available. It's we're not aware, and we are not going there and actually accessing them. So yesterday, Shrinkla said that she was literally harassed by so many, so many people online, and then, you know, she, you know, because she's a public figure. But then, I mean, so happens with fake news is also. But then, social media does give you an option to report, right, and to uh, mark spam. So when I said offline and online, it's the same world, like in real life, if you're hackled or harassed by somebody, you would go into the police and report it. That's the first thing that would come into your mind. So why is that not our reaction? when the same thing happens online. Yeah, and then it's a collaborative effort. It has to be two ways, from the users and from the creators as well. Yeah. Okay, I think that's a strong message for everyone uh, present here to be mindful of what you do on social media and how correctly you should do it as well. So moving on to the questions, I have a few of them uh, here on my uh, app. And I think I've addressed uh, Pratik's uh, question uh, to Biswas about the security aspect. And the second question is from Sujit Lutel, who says, can we see international payment gateway in Nepal any day soon? Is F1 soft up to it? Asim. And this is with, uh, for uh, Sujit. Sujit to Biswas. Yeah, Sujit, uh, we already have a payment gateway, international payment gateway in Nepal. So Nobel and uh, Himalayan Bank started the uh, international payment gateway. If uh, uh, you're talking about like uh, sending money abroad using the payment gateway or buying stuff in Amazon or Alibaba, then that's not going to happen soon because of our economy and because of the, the liquidity uh, we have, trade deficit, we say, central bank. So uh, the ones we have a uh, comfort of earning dollars uh, then we'll have uh, that options to buy, purchase goods from the online uh, platform like Alibaba and Amazon. But uh, if you want to accept payment from abroad uh, using international credit card from the foreigners, that's already available and uh, they're open for integration with the e-commerce. And uh, the process is like you just need to sign up as a merchant uh, with the Nobel or Himalayan bank and you need to integrate with your e-commerce site. and. Uh, the very next day, you'll be able to receive dollars in your account. Thank you. So the next question um, is, the last question is to Ashim. Uh, it, this is from Sambhav, who asks, in a parallel universe, Tutal could have entered Bangladesh. What's different in that parallel universe? I don't know. Uh, it depends. But if I had to take Tootle to Bangladesh, this is what I would do. Um, be more efficient at what you do. Don't stick to the technology that was there 10 years back. Evolve and then repeat. That is what I would do. OK, so that's for the question. And uh, possibly for the last closing remarks of 30 seconds each, 
uh, we have this uh, slightly broader topic of uh, can Nepal do IT? So uh, while we try to sort of narrow it down to w what our um, work area is, but just to do justice to the theme, uh, what are your personal thoughts, each of you, um, for Nepal to be competitive and what can, if Nepal can do IT? So, like I said in my opening remarks that yes, definitely Nepal can do IT, but then we need a constructive roadmap, you know, because IT, as I said, it's a big umbrella. We need to be more focused. We need to understand that these are the skill sets that we are good at. These are the skill sets that we can create in-house and then sort of go ahead with it. Uh, as I've seen that uh, certain organizations here, think tanks like NEF, they do very nice reports and recently they did doing business in uh, Federated Nepal. Maybe more reports on concentrated on the IT sector to give, to give a perspective to the young entrepreneurs who are outside the valley, who want to do something and have the dream, but don't really know how to put it into implementation. Maybe something constructive we can have in those lines. Thank you. Uh, yes, I think uh, we can do it. And uh, in my belief, IT is the one particle which will be uh, recognized very soon as the highest GDP contributing in this country. And uh, I think we need to focus on uh, how to sell, how to sell ourselves, how to sell Nepal brand over the IT across the world. And uh, if we're able to do that, uh, I think by 2025, uh, we'll be uh, establishing IT as the biggest contributor in our GDP. Wonderful thought. Asim? Um, IT might just be the industry where we can compete in global arena um, because almost everyone is virtually new. Can we do it? Yes, we can. How do we do it? We would need a lot of support from the government instead of pulling our legs or bringing up uh, new regulations that bind us. They should be more open-minded towards IT. Uh, they need to protect it, preserve what we have, and let us grow. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, you could be one of the biggest IT players, not only in Nepal, but in the region, in a few years, if the government supports you, right? So yes, we can do it. Yes, I think we can do it uh, if the government uh, provides an environment to help the IT companies and everyone else where IT is now so pervasive in whatever we do. I think it is imperative for the government to also provide a congenial environment where all these uh, companies and initiatives can flourish. For an example, if, uh, if a movie like an Aquaman um, is in the entertainment sector, um, can uh, top the box office as one billion dollars with just one movie. Imagine the uh, potential of IT. We have heard in the other sessions that if Nepal has to become a crossover the middle income uh, status, then at least a sustained uh, growth by Dr. Swarnim Wagle. He was saying that at least 10 to uh, more than 10 percent growth, 8 to 10 percent was what the minimum is for the country to grow. And uh, even uh, I picked up a line which uh, Xavier had mentioned uh, that uh, Nepal, instead of seeing itself uh, squeezed between two big countries, it should be seen as a pivot country rather than a transitional state. So I'm sure that uh, there's amazing opportunities up ahead, and IT is going to be the core or the uh, invisible partner in whatever all we do. Thank you, audience, for being very patient, and let's give the panelists a huge round of applause. Thank you very much. Suman Shakya signing off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Suman. Thank you, Akanksha, Asim and Biswas. Thank you very much. Kantipur Con